Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our Car Tech How-To video on the 2023 Toyota Crown, and this is the Platinum trim level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Lead Card Toyota in beautiful Mankato, Minnesota. So, wow, it is so fun to, to actually step into the Toyota Crown finally. And uh, what, what, a, what a very, very, very nice car. So uh, right in front of us here, we have the 12.3 inch all digital screen. And it is absolutely stunning. Now over on the left, you're gonna see uh, sort of your electric information. You can see when the car's charging, if you're driving, how economically you're driving. And then, there, you know, there's a power band that shows you if you're using that, that electricity. Um, and then of course, in the middle, you've got a driver's area. You can get like your adaptive cruise and that kind of stuff showing up in there. And then over on the far right, you have your speedometer. Now, Inside of the speedometer and inside of the uh, the other gauge on the left, where you have power and charge and eco, there are there is information that you can manipulate in those areas as well. In addition to that, you can change the whole look of the dash. Now, to do all that, you're going to use the uh, four arrows and the OK button and the back button on the left side of the steering wheel. Now, before I get into the the, the screen here. Um, you basically can save three preset driver information screens and you toggle through them using your left and right arrows. So if I go to the left one, you can see now that I'm on number three and I've got Apple Music showing up on the left and at the right I've got my tire pressure. If I hit the left arrow again, I change it to two. Now I've got an eco score uh, on the left and I've got uh, battery level on the right. And if I go one more, okay, I'm into one. Now I've got a kind of a calm screen on the left and I've got a calm screen on the right. Now, to get in and change this, what you're gonna do is press and hold the okay button. And then you can see those two parentheses show up. Um, and we're actually gonna go over to the left with the left arrow and we're gonna start here. Uh, now you're gonna notice that in addition to having these dots, oops, I gotta hold it again. If you don't, uh, if you don't go move quick enough, it goes away. You've got these dots that are on the left, or the right side on the left cage that I'm going through. That's a little confusing. Uh, and then if I go one more, you get uh, some settings that you can make. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go, just go through these. So we'll go up one. The first screen you get is a calm screen. The second screen you get is uh, your uh, miles per gallon average and you can press and hold okay to reset. I'm gonna go down one more. Oops, I, I didn't move quick enough again. So I'm gonna press and hold this, go back over. All right, now I'm gonna go down one more. You get eco score and then uh, EV driving ratio, total time. And then you get a really nice compass go one more and you get your media. Uh, now, if I go one more, then I just go back to the top to the calm screen. So those are the screens that you can get inside the left gauge. Now I'm gonna go to one more to the left and here you've got some settings that you can make like fuel economy. If you want that to show up, it's check marked. But if you don't want fuel, if you don't want fuel economy to show up in this gauge, you can uncheck that. So basically everything that's check marked here, um, I can add this, I go down, I've got some more. Uh, I can add drive info, trip A, trip B, energy monitor. Okay, and then I have one more page. If I go down one more, I can show tire pressure and all wheel drive systems. Now, I'm gonna press the right arrow. And now when I go through these screens, you're gonna see those additional screens that I added. There was one. Here's two, three, see all these screens I added. So you can determine exactly what will show up here. And the point of that is so you can kind of divide it between the left gauge and the right gauge. So now I'm gonna press and hold the okay button again, and I'm gonna go over to the far right gauge where the speedometer is. Now, if I go up, use the up arrow, let's start at the top. So here I got my calm screen like I had on the other side. 
adaptive cruise mode. Uh, you got your drive info, trip eight, uh, your battery level, tire pressure monitoring system, uh, which tire is getting traction here, and then we're back to the top. And if I go to the right, one more, this is where I can decide what's going to show up in this window. So I got fuel economy, eco score, I can have audio, trip B, got one more, and tire pressure, and all wheel drive. Now, anything you check mark will be available as an option inside that gauge. Anything that's not check marked will not be available. Uh, so that is just so, so cool. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to uh, go back and just quickly show you here. You can see all the different gauges that I've added to this one. Uh, navigation was one. There we go. Navigation is not currently running, so I guess it's not going to show up. It would be, uh, I'm assuming, right inside this gauge if you had a course plotted. Okay. Now, the third area you can manipulate, of course, is the center. So I'm going to go up, okay, and I get a calm screen. So if I just don't want a lot of information, that's the one I want. Go down one, I get my adaptive cruise mode. And one of the new things I've added here is you have got four stages. Here's stage one, stage, okay, stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. So typically in adaptive cruise mode, you've only got three of those settings, and now they've added a fourth. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, press and hold this again, and I'm gonna go down to the next screen, okay, which is gonna be a calm screen, and I got settings and messages. I'm gonna go back. Now, I wanna point out something. When I go down here, do you notice it has an OK button with a stretched arrow? If I hit OK, it stretches that to be a little bit bigger. So anytime you see that, you can make that area just a little bit larger which I think is really neat, depending on your vision. Okay, now, um, I, there is another thing you can do here. If I, if I go, press here, and I go down to settings. Let's take a look at that, because this is where you can actually adjust how the screen looks. So, if I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna keep going down. A Lot of safety systems in here. I'm gonna go to meter settings press OK. Oh, I got to hold OK there. Okay, I got language units, but here, meter type and meter style. Um, you can change the look of the dashboard. So here I go to meter type and I press OK. And I've got this view, which is the one I had. I can go up here, changes it again, or I can go use the back button and go up one more and I can change it to this. All right, that is just way cool that they allow you to, to do that. I'm gonna hit the back button here and uh, now I'm gonna go uh, down here to where I was. I'm gonna press hold here. I'm gonna use the back button and I'm gonna go down to meter style. I gotta push that. I can, I'm right now this is smart, let's go to casual. Okay, that's the casual look. We seem smart, let's see tough. I like the terminology. And let's see sporty. Okay, now the thing is, you can keep that view. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to type. Okay, if I go up here to this view and I click, you know, so the style stays the same. Now, if I, if, if I go backwards, I go up to the very top one. This was kind of like the calm screen. They got rid of a lot of stuff. So, of course, you're not going to see it right there. But that is just really, really cool that that style stays. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go back to my uh, classic view here, I call that. Okay. I'm going to hit the back button again, go down to meter style. And so that is how you're going to manipulate the dashboard. All right. Now. I am going to leave it on smart where it was. I'm gonna hit the back button again. Okay, so now I need to go down because I'm actually at the top of the settings list. So I'm gonna go down, here we go. Um, you can do dial type, okay? You can have a hybrid system or you can just say, I want to tack. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That is just way cool. You can switch between those two. I'm gonna hit back. 
Um, you can have the EV show or not show. You can see that changing on the left side of the dashboard. You can, uh, for fuel economy, you can set it to trip average or total average and just go to the one you want and press, press OK. Hit the back button, hybrid system. Okay, you can have eco guidance on or off. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button again, go down, drive info items. Distance, if I click on there, I can say I want distance or average speed. Okay, or uh, if I do average speed, I can now get total time as well. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go under trip A items. And again, if I go under distance, I have my choice for distance, average speed. Uh, and if I, again, if I go to average speed, then I have a choice for adding total time. We go back. If I go down to total time, see there it gives it to you right there. Total time, average speed. So you have some choices as to what trip A and trip B are gonna show you. This is gonna show you the same items. Now, pop-up display, and I click on that. Uh, that's where things pop up in the screen and tell you, like your turn-by-turn -turn directions. Okay, you can turn these on or off just by clicking the OK button. Your telephone, audio operation, volume operation, uh, go down again, voice control and brightness. So anytime that happens, it's going to some, some sort of icon, symbol is going to show up on your dashboard. If you don't want it, this is where you're going to turn that off, those pop-ups. I'm going to click uh, back and I'm going to go down again and this is where the default setting is and you can press uh, push OK to restore. Okay, I mean that is just awesome. Okay, I'm going to go back up here. That was meter settings. If I go up here to vehicle settings and click, I got click and hold. Uh, if you don't want it to suggest you should take a break because, you know, it'll keep track if your hands aren't on, on the steering wheel enough and so on, it'll, or you're weaving, it'll suggest you pull over. If you don't like that, you can turn that off with the OK button right there. Okay, now right here, um, dynamic rate of cruise control, you can have the acceleration settings. So if you don't want the car to, like, really floor it to speed up, you can adjust that right here. You want minimal acceleration. Or you want, no, when I'm, if I get slowed down, I want to speed right back up again as quick as possible. And then, of course, a medium setting. You can have guide message on or off. Curve speed reduction. Now, this will automatically, and this is new, it will automatically uh, sense a curve coming up and will reduce the dynamic rate of cruise control uh, just a little bit to give you a little more ease around the corner. And you can set that sensitivity. Do you want to, you know, just speed, uh, reduce speed just a little bit? Uh, you want that off completely or maximum reduced speed. Um, you can kind of, you have to set that, you have to try it out and set it, but that's just cool that they have that feature and then they give you control over it as well. I'm going to hit the back button here. All right, tire pressure. Okay, if you're uh, switching your tires around, you can go into there, tire rotation, tire pressure setting, and then I'm going to go down to pressure unit setting and here's where you can change that. Just scroll to the one you want. Press the OK button. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back again. Under scheduled maintenance here, um, it just asks if you want to reset the data. All right, so obviously I don't. I'm just going to uh, go back here. I'm going to go down again. Oil maintenance. If you go into here, you can reset that after oil change. I'll click back. Rear seat reminder, really useful to get out of the car, shut it off, it reminds you to check the back seat. If you don't like that, you can click that off right there. And then uh, go back, and then I'm back to meter settings. Okay, so that was it for meter settings and vehicle settings. All right, so up here, you have your sign reading, and you can turn that off completely. You can turn it on, or you can press and hold OK to give you uh, the notification method and the notification level. So method, if it's above the speed limit, it'll notify you, and other. So let me go to above the speed limit. You can have no notification, only visual, or visual and audio. And then I'm going to hit back. Under others, your choices are, again, no notification, only visual or visual and audio. I'm going to hit the button twice. Notification level, if I go in here, you can say, if I go over the speed limit, 
when do I want to get warned? At one mile per hour over, three miles, or five miles an hour over? All right, I'm gonna hit the back button. I'm gonna hit the back button again. That was RSA if I go up here. Now, these are all sort of your safety systems and they're just on or off for the most part. So for instance, lane departure. If I click and hold this, I get options. I can turn it off now. I can say I want the steering wheel to vibrate uh, or, and then I want alert timing. Do I want early or do I want it, uh, uh, you know, early or late? All right, I'm gonna just leave that back where it was. I'm gonna hit the back button. This one, the blind spot monitoring is simply an on or off. I'm just gonna go back here, hit the back button for a minute. I'm gonna, of course, turn that back on, okay? And when you do that, the uh, blind spot lights in the mirrors do show up, okay? Now here, if I press and hold, okay, you have your, <laughs> this is like your, your crash detection. So um, you can have warning timing. And again, that's a personal choice. You want a really late warning or an early warning or kind of in the middle. If you don't want that all at all, you can just simply turn that off. And of course I don't, so I'm just gonna hit the back button, okay? Okay, so for here, this is a simple on or off. Down here, you got your parking sensors on or off. All right, so these are all the same. And then we're back to RSA. Okay, there was one I didn't cover, and that is the adjust meter brightness. If I click on that, then this is where I adjust the dashboard brightness and dimness. Okay, right there. So at the beginning, I told you there were three kind of preset things. Okay, where if you use the arrows, you can go to say, say here's Here's, uh, here's view one, right? Now, if I want to change that, I press and hold, and I go over here, and I say, I don't want a calm screen there. What I want there is I want this. Okay, leave that, go to the right. I don't want adaptive cruise there. I want a calm screen there, and over here on the far right, I want this. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press, I'm gonna let that go away, and I'm gonna press this button, and I'm gonna go to setting two, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to setting one that I just changed. And you can see now it's changed to what I have it. So all you gotta do is be on one, two, or three, then go over and make your changes, and it automatically saves it for you. All right, that's it for the driver's information screen. What an awesome screen, I absolutely love it. All right, next we're gonna move over to the infotainment system. All right, so moving over to this gorgeous 12.3 inch screen um, infotainment system. This is the uh, just the Toyota Audio Multimedia screen. It's, not, it's built by Toyota. Um, so what does it have? Uh, it has, of course, a 12.3 inch uh, screen. It's got uh, 11 JBL uh, speakers, including a subwoofer. Of course, AM, FM, Sirius XM, a Wi-Fi hotspot, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, um, and Bluetooth, of course. Now, it's a touch screen. The only physical button is the button that's right here. Uh, otherwise, you've got a simple menu right here. Now, I, I cannot get into the navigation because you, know, you need to buy the car to, to get in there and subscribe, and I can't do that. So, But it's a very nice uh, navigation system. Okay, so basically, um, you're going to have your menu right down here, and that's it. There's no home screen. So you go to your media, okay, and you got your sources right here. You go to your phone. We'll connect the device later. Vehicle, you got a few things that you can look at here, and actually there's quite a bit, don't get me wrong. Um, and then there's settings, okay? So before I dive into the system, I just wanna talk real briefly about what is new on this system. Because there are a few things. Uh, so, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. That's there's some new things here. So we have an upgraded forward facing uh, camera with higher resolution and wider angles, an improved radar sensor for a longer and wider field of view, and you can now get over the air updates for 
Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which you never used to be able to do. Okay, so there was, I just pressed the camera button on the center console, and it gave us a nice 360. Hit the button again, and, and you go back. Okay, and you can stop that at any time if you want. Okay, so it's checking underneath, basically on the sides of your car, underneath, making sure nothing's there. You can pause it there. I can go to this view, okay, and I get a little more over uh, bird's eye view of that. You can pause it there anytime. You can hit that gear wheel, uh, panoramic view monitor. You can turn on cornering view, view under vehicle. See what I'm talking about? Toyota Park Assist 3D. I mean, that is, it's just amazing. And it, and it basically does everything for you, including switching gears and running the accelerator brake and parking. Uh, so when you first try it, it's a little nerve wracking, but um, that has that has improved. Now, um, so what does all the Toyota Safety Sense include? Well, you got pre-collision system, you got lane departure alert, you got dynamic radar cruise control, and now you've got four gap settings. You've always had three to get you a distance between the car ahead of you. You now have four. Um, you've got lane tracing assist, road sign assist, automatic uh, high beams, proactive driving assist, um, and then all new... It can provide gentle braking when driving into curves or gentle braking and or steering to help support driving tasks. Includes obstacle anticipation assist, deacceleration assist, steering assist, uh, and, you know, and so much more. So uh, just a lot of really neat improvements. Okay, while we're here, I'm just going to put the car in reverse and show you the backup camera, right? So you've got this view, which is the bird's eye view. You've got sensors up front that are picking up something here on that corner. You've got dynamic guidelines right here in the back. I love it that they not only show you where the rear tire is going to go, but where the front tire is going to go. This is kind of your safety zone right up here. And then it's showing you the backup camera, right? Um, if I go here, okay, now I can get a little wider view and a little narrower view, okay? Uh, I can get rid of part of the lines. I can change them a little bit, and I can get them. Don't go past this red line. This, this is literally like an inch off your bumper, So, um, especially if you have a hitch or, or something on back there. But just, yeah, that's, that's a good place to stop or before that. All right, if I go into settings, this is where I was before. Okay, and I won't go into all that. But you can change your vehicle body color. So if you buy a red uh, Toyota Crown, well, you just click there, click OK. Okay, let's go back here. And now you got a red Toyota Crown. So pretty awesome. All right, so then I'm just going to hit the... Uh, hit the park button again, which is just a push button here. Okay, so let's get started. I can't get into the navigation. I can tell you that it's it's super nice uh it's very fast to respond it runs on voice command you do have a voice command um on the left side of your stream well however all you need to do is say hey toyota what do you want to do turn the temperature up to 71. setting the driver's seat temperature to 71 degrees okay you noticed that it only turned up my temperature. And that's because in the ceiling above me, there are two different microphones, one for the passenger, one for the driver. So the car knows who's asking for it, which is awesome. And you can actually hook both two phones to it and you can both receive incoming calls through the car. But that is just awesome. Okay, so it's, it's a very, very nice system. All right, I'm gonna go into media here. So. This first tab is just your favorites. What's been set, not a lot on here yet. It's a brand new car. But if you want to do that, you can just click on some. This does, of course, have Sirius XM. Okay, so I can tune right there. If I want to mark something as a favorite, I go right there. And now it's entered into my favorite. I want to I quickly just edit this. If I want this one to come down there, I can just switch it. I can hit edit. And then I can actually delete... Uh, that's where I delete my favorites. Okay, done editing. Okay, now I can also, in Sirius XM or FM or AM, I can go to Tune right here, uh, and I can program in a number. And, that, and it's great, they just give you that choice right up here. So that's the other way you can tune. Let's take a look at FM radio, and I am going to go ahead and I'm going to click on all stations, and they're right here. So I just scroll through, pick uh, what I want, 
and um, then again I can change channels here if I want or I can go back okay to go to tune and now I can do it from there again so AM is the same way now uh, how do I how do I make a favorite okay so here I am and I have this on again you just get the same heart right okay now let's go back here and let's go back and I want to show you that AM looks exactly the same so here it is you want to do a favorite you just click on it click the heart we'll just undo that quickly and then you have your favorites listed right here you will notice that the favorites includes both FM AM and Sirius XM so the minute I'm in AM right now if I go here it takes me right into Sirius XM which I absolutely love Okay, now, and, and all modern cars uh, do this nowadays, but it's very nice on those favorite lists. Okay, so how do you adjust sound for any of these? You click on settings, and you're going to go down in here, and you're going to go to sound and media. And then here's the levels. This is the, your auto level sound levelizer, so as the car goes faster, there's more ambient noise. It increases the volume slightly, so it stays the same in your ears. Um you can adjust ringtone, new message, receive volume, but you have to have a phone uh, hook to that to do that. You can set the system voice volume here and driving assist just by sliding. Okay. Sound tuning. Now, here's where you get your treble, mid, and bass. And then you have, if I go up, your balance and fade right there. And again, you can just click and drag. And you can always hit recenter if you want to. Okay, that, and that's how you're going to adjust the sound for AM, FM, uh, and Sirius XM, or your phone, whatever's connected. Okay, so if I uh, go into media here, you can turn uh, on the cover art if you want that. Um, that's what makes the pictures appear when you're playing something off your phone. Uh, so I'd suggest leaving that one on. All right, so I'm going to go back here, and um, let's go back up here all right so that is fm radio and radio and sirius xm now while we're here we're going to go ahead and hook up apple carplay and then android auto just to show you uh how to do it so what you want to do is uh first i'm going to go to phone and i'm going to say connected device and then i'm going to go on my phone open it up unlock it go to my settings i'm going to go to bluetooth and I'm going to scroll to the bottom of my Bluetooth list because that's where Toyota Crown will show up. And there it is. So I click on it. And this is my iPhone. I'm checking to see if that number is right. Check to make sure it's right because if someone else's Bluetooth phone is close to you, it could try to hook to theirs. Okay? And then it says, do I want to allow my favorites and contacts to sync? You would want to click OK. I am saying don't allow because it's not my car. All right. You can use, okay, so I could go ahead and click the Toyota mobile app um, right here if I want to, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit cancel. It says your device is now connected uh, and supports Apple CarPlay. Do you want to enable? If you click no, you're going to go right back to regular Bluetooth. So you need to click yes at this point. And on my phone, it says Toyota would like to communicate with the Toyota Multimedia Crown. I'm going to click allow. Then it asks me if I want can use uh, CarPlay. I'm going to say use CarPlay. And now I should be good to go. Um, allow Toyota Crown to check for CarPlay apps. That's the first time I've seen that on my phone. So I'm just going to click allow. All right. And here you go. Now I'm not going to put my phone in this handy dandy uh, vertical wireless charging. That's awesome. Okay. And here, here's Apple, uh, Apple CarPlay. So basically, your most recent things you used are showing up right here. It shows you what battery level your phone is at, what signal you're getting, the time. And then this one, this little emblem, if you don't see it on your Apple CarPlay, this is driver focus. So with that turned on, you know, certain calls and that kind of stuff don't come through. Okay? I mean, they still come to your phone, but they don't bother you in the car. All right. Uh... So I'm going to click this. These are all the apps. Basically, it, it's looked at my phone and said, well, uh, these are all the apps that work with the Toyota Crown that are on your phone currently. And you're going to notice they're mostly media or navigation. Those are the two big ones. So I got news. I can have audiobooks, podcasts, music. I can, of course, get text messages, which I can I, it'll read them to me. And then I can orally respond. Of course, your phone. Uh, Sirius XM Waze, which I already have Sirius XM in the car, but it's on my phone as well. 
Google Maps, uh, Onyx Off-Road, which is kind of cool to see that goes into Apple CarPlay, folks, because that is when you're off-road on a side-by-side. And, and I, you could guys be on, on, on a different vehicle as well, but it works in Apple CarPlay, which is just the coolest thing. All right. So if you have an aftermarket portable uh, Apple CarPlay, you can set that in your vehicle and then you have a bigger map. Okay. You got Pandora and so forth. All right. So um, to get back to the Toyota screen, you're just going to click right here and go right back to the Toyota system. Okay, you want to get back to Apple CarPlay, you notice now I've got an Apple CarPlay added above navigation. And I just click on it and bring it here. Now, anytime my phone rings or I get a text message, this is where it's going to go. All right, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to delete a phone from the system. And then I'm going to hook up my Android. Okay, and show you how Android Auto works. This is a beautiful split screen. Um, this is search for whatever navigation you're showing. And this is, uh, of course, media. If you click on this one or this one, it goes full screen. All right, so let's go back to the Toyota screen. And I am going to go to Bluetooth. I'm under settings, by the way, this last one. Bluetooth and devices. I'm going to go to Nathan's phone. And I'm going to go forget. If you sell the car, you definitely want to put that in there and tell it to forget your phone. Okay, that's awesome. Now we're going to hook up an Android phone. All right, so here we go. So I got my Android phone turned on. I am going to go into settings, I'm going to go into Bluetooth, and then I'm going to hit search for devices. I'm going to try something here since it's not filing. I, I can search for Android Auto on my phone. So I'm going to go connect. So I went to Android Auto from the search bar. I went to connect to car. Oh, okay. It says it connect to wireless. Okay, I did that. Visible is Galaxy 0A3S. So that triggered it. So if you're using an Android phone and it doesn't work under Bluetooth settings, it doesn't see it, look down at the bottom of your phone and you'll see, and like search for Android Auto, click on it, and then that is should should work. Okay, that's okay. The same number. Okay. I don't need to download that for now. Um, yep. Uh, again, I have to click on OK to enable uh, Android Auto. All right, so it's connecting. In just a minute, I'll be able to put this down. And uh, hit continue. You notice you do get an exit button up there if you need it. Okay. Now, you do have some settings in the phone that you can make, okay? So this is under settings, Toyota Crown, wireless android auto and then it can it can do like a hey google you can do day, day night map mode um start android automatically always and so on i won't read this but there's quite a few things that you can do and customize so it might be worth your while to take a look at that i'm going to shut mine off stick it in that handy dandy wireless charger okay and here i am in android auto i love it Love it. I didn't show you this in Apple CarPlay, but it does the same thing. This is full screen. That's just awesome. There is no more screen over here. This is all just kind of glass, but not actual screen. So it fills the whole screen. So it, that's very nice. Now, most recently used apps. And then like Apple CarPlay, Apple CarPlay has a dice. This has like a door and two windows. Click on it. Okay, now this is your mixed view. Uh, so you get navigation. They put search up here and you got YouTube uh, or music media right there. If I click on the dice again, now it moves this over to a window. And instead of an Apple CarPlay where you scroll left or right, you now go up or down. And it's because the same kind of things. It's your navigation. I mean, I've got Waze and Google. Almost any navigation system I know of will work on here. So if to get back to your um, Toyota system, again, just like Apple CarPlay, you click there. So now we're down to here. Climate. Now you have got, God bless Toyota, because they put a sync button that's physical in the buttons. You never see that. So kudos, Toyota, for thinking of that. But you've got almost all physical controls. So um, really, if you just kind of want to 
something different to do, you can come up here and use the screen. But most everything uh, is right here. All right. Uh, right. This, this is just a graphic. There's no clicking on it, which I wish you I wish you could. The, the thing that you can get into is options. So eco heat and cool. That's going to save you a little fuel and de-icer. Oh, if you live in a cold winter climate, de-icer, you want to turn that on because it, it, it as you get ready, it thaws your the wind, the glass under the windshield. Uh, it thaws your the glass that's underneath your windshield wipers. So pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Okay, so um, let's let's go back under vehicle. That was climate. Let's look at comfort. Okay, here you can turn on your uh, auto heated or your heated and ventilated seats, your heated steering wheel, but you can also set it to auto. Now, if you and and by the way, all those controls are physical as well below the infotainment screen, which I love that they're physical. Okay. Uh, auto just means that the car is going to sense the outside ambient temperature and it will decide when you start the car whether to turn on the heated seats or ventilated seats and how high to turn them, second stage, third stage, whatever, and the heated steering wheel. It'll do all that automatically for you, okay? If, um, yep, and this is just for the front, okay? So I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to look at trip information. You can get a nice graph here. You can look at uh, a history. This is all trip information. You can clear the data or you can update. Now, let me go back here a minute. Energy flow. And Rob and I both love the AA battery uh, that is uh, sitting right there and it's only partially charged. So good luck with that. No, I'm joking. Uh, so what that's going to show is where the power is distributed. Okay? Uh, but we couldn't help but crack up on there and... It just needs a double A written on top of it or energizer, um, but that's a nice craft to have when you're when you're driving. That's kind of fun. That's cool. So under vehicle alert, you're not going to see anything, which at first seems kind of funny, but it's only going to send you a message if it needs to tell you something, like change oil or tire pressure is wrong or something. Change the double A battery. <laughs> change the double A battery in in the electronics. There you go. All right. Now we got one more, and that is settings, notifications. Okay, software updates are on, vehicle suggestions are on, virtual assistance is on. And that's that, hey, Toyota. Okay, under Wi-Fi, you can have the hotspot turned on. That's where you do that, and your Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, display. Okay, here's your screen. You can have the screen off if you don't like the light at night and simply tap the screen to turn it back on. You can uh, automatically adjust the brightness of the screen just by having that on. Or if you want to manually do the brightness and the contrast, you could do that as well. And then you have pretty much the same controls for the camera. I, I really like this feature. Um, if your eyesight is not as good as it used to be, you might really find setting the brightness and the contrast to your backup camera or your forward mount camera really, really helpful so that you can actually see it better. So I love it that cars or manufacturers are putting that availability availability in there. And it's on every modern car. You can go there and adjust it. And vehicle customization. Now, here you got quite a few things that I'm not going to go into all of them, but I'm going to go into two of them. And they all work the same way. So I'm going to go on to lights. So you're going to have a definition. You're going to have a choice. So normal, bright, no, bright, brighter, no, dark, darker. So auto sensitivity, I happen to like this. I have a car that has auto lights. They turn on at dusk, right? But for me, they turn on too late. And if I were in the car, if I had this capability, I would make it turn on when it's brighter out. But if you don't like it, like, I don't want my lights coming out till I can't see anything. Well, turn it darker. But they give you that adjustment. Okay. Uh, auto off timer. You park in front of your house. You get out. You need the lights on for a few seconds. And before they automatically shut off, you can say 90 seconds to 30 seconds. Or you can shut that feature off so the moment you turn the car off, the lights go off. Daytime running lights. You can turn them off, but your insurance... Depending on your state, will often give you a discount for having daytime running lights. Daytime running lights, so I would check on that. Okay, I'm going to show you another one. Uh, boarding and exit is a neat one. Seat slide. So when I stop the car, it's going to slide the back seat all, or it's going to slide the driver's seat all the way back to make it easier for me to get out. Then when I get in and I push the start button, it's going to pull the seat back up to where I last had it set. 
So you can have that full. If that's too far for you, you can click it to partial and it will move the seat back just a little bit and then it will readjust it when you get back in. But that has a, usually we call it easy exit. All right, that's it for the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the 2023 Toyota Crown. And again, this is the platinum trim level. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.